Yeah, I think we can get going here. Um, afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Antler Gold's Q1 calendar Q1 webinar update. These updates are put together to keep the conversation open between you, the, the stakeholder, and, and the company. And just to put into context where the company is currently is, what the company is currently up to, as well as uh, discuss any work that is currently ongoing or any results or news releases that have been released. Obviously, uh, from Antler Gold's perspective, there hasn't been any, any public announcements during the course of Q1. And I hope during, uh, during today's update, I'll be able to uh, contextualize why, why that is and help you understand the process and the work that Antler Gold is busy performing. So before I start, um, obviously there's cautionary uh, statements. Uh, I encourage you all to read it. I am gonna be making some forward-looking statements uh, regarding some of our projects and the work and all of our technical disclosure uh, is signed off. If you require any more information regarding any of our technical disclosure, I encourage you to please go to our, our website and to the company's official communications. So just quickly, uh, the webinar agenda, short and sweet, I think we're going to focus on what Antler has been up to, the strategy that Antler is busy uh, applying here in Namibia, as well as uh, in, in Zambia and the rest of Southern Africa as well as just to give you a bit of an idea of why the company is well positioned during, uh, for that. And if you have any questions thereafter, um, you know, please feel free to pop them in the Q&A. So something that I'd like to focus on um, is the leadership uh, structure that we've built here at Antler Gold. And what we've tried to do uh, and we've successfully done is put together a team of African uh, explor explorationists and geologists uh, and marry them with North American uh, capital market experts. Uh, often what we have found is that when you, you speak about Africa and the North American markets, there's always this, this concept that Africa has... Uh, you know, is, is, is deep, darkest Africa, and there's concerns over there. And, and we as a company feel that Africa represents a significant op, uh, mineral uh, opportunity, um, not only due to its vast, largely untapped, you know, mineral resources, but also because there's been significant changes in uh, uh, exploration and the way people are exploring and the way people are looking at a lot of these areas that have been previously explored in different ways. Um, and now that leaves a large area of unexplored uh, opportunities. That coupled with the fact that the likes of uh, Namibia and Zambia, the two jurisdictions we active in, are, re are highly regarded mineral jurisdictions. And Namibia is arguably one of the, the best uh, mining jurisdictions in Africa. I think they rated second in the previous uh, rating and is, is a massive, massive geological opportunity. We've brought that technical experience and we've married it with extremely well positioned uh, and well regarded North American capital market experts. So that allows us the opportunity to operate efficiently in Africa, uh, as well as raise sufficient capital to allow for the high risk exploration that we're busy doing. And when I say high risk, uh, it's bringing something from a conceptual stage all the way through to a pre-discovery or discovery stage. And, and uh, I apologize if you hear me sniffing or my, I lose my voice. I've come down with a bit of the flu. And uh, yeah, just battling through it. So on the on this on your screen now, we've got the Antler Gold Exploration Portfolio, and as you can see, we are active in Namibia and Zambia. I'm going to focus on our Namibian portfolio quickly. 
on a broad spectrum, uh, Antler Gold is looking for mineralized gold mineralization in Namibia that is associated with the typical orogenic uh, gold uh, deposit style. And orogenic uh, meaning structure, what you normally need in those areas is a lot of structural uh, areas of interest or complexity that allow for fluids to move along and then you need certain areas that allow for the capture uh, of fluid and the uh, and putting together of economically viable gold deposits. In 2016, uh, Antler Gold, the board of directors, uh, backed myself to come down to Namibia and start looking at opportunities within Namibia. And because we were targeting the orogenic uh, gold deposition model, a lot of areas in Namibia hadn't been ever explored for this. It was a different way of exploring within the region. And we, we thought that this was, uh, well, we definitely still feel, and it's been validated by the recent discoveries of, of uh, other opportunities, that Namibia is a growing gold destination. We are primarily active in what's known as the Damara Gold Belt, or it's becoming known as the Damara Gold Belt, and it ho hosts gold mines such as the Ochikoto gold mine that belongs to B2 Gold, Navajap, which is a privately held uh, gold mine and close to our Eronga Gold Project, the Dundu Gold Project, which is held by Osino Resources, and the recently discovered and now moving into develop, uh, the feasibility study, uh, Osino Resources, uh, Twin Hills Discovery, uh, which is now north of 3 million ounces. I see I've got 2 million ounces on there. But um, all of those deposits and known gold deposits share similarities, which include not only the position of where they fall within Namibia, but also the stratigraphy and the relationship to regional and local structures. And in 2016, Antler Gold, uh, at the end of 2016 and 2017, Antler Gold arrived in Namibia and started putting together a land package, which is now known as our Rongo Gold Project. And you can see that on the bottom left. The Rongo Gold Project, you know, overlies again the similar lithologies and structures as uh, Osino Resources Twin Hills Discovery. And since 2017, we have built a conceptual model uh, on what is known as our C2 target into a more viable drill ready target. And we currently have several gold anomalies along that C2 target that are busy being followed up. In early quarter, uh, last quarter of last year, we signed a deal with what's historically known as the Rindi Gold Project, um, which we have now called the Mkoshi Gold Project because we are growing that project there. And the again, it shares significant similarities to B2 Gold's uh, Ochikoto and Wolfshag deposit. And I like to say, you know, the, the technical teams at um, Osino Resources, as well as at B2 Gold and, and some of the other uh, explorers that came uh, ahead of us have, you know, paid our school fees. Uh, Antler Gold is at, at a early stage in exploration, uh, which is referred to as the concept or pre-discovery stage. And, and it definitely carries the highest risk when it comes to, to um, uh, investment. Um, and in this beginning, what we're doing at this stage, what we're doing is we're building large concepts and now testing them with, with on the ground exploration techniques such as geochemical and geophysical to validate those concepts. We brought the Arongo Gold Project from conceptual all the way up to drill ready. The Onkoshi Gold Project is a historically known and tested gold opportunity that is still open. And now we're testing other concepts along with the, the known uh, uh, gold um, mineral, mineralization that has previously been identified there. And then the Pereses Gold Project 
is again Antler Gold putting to put taking its technical team and putting together a land package that shares the similar similar geological settings as other gold uh, known gold deposits. Same mythology, same structures, uh, and and similar opportunities. And then we have various applications through Namibia. The company currently holds just shy of. Um, 390,000 hectares, uh, give or take some here or there, um, of applications and active licenses in Namibia. And we continue to assess viable opportunities. That is a um, massive uh, opportunity for us in the short term and the long term, as it is allowing us to build up a portfolio that allows us to attract potential strategic partners. Gold, uh, we definitely are very bullish on the gold price. Gold, the gold price is going up. Um, more investment is flowing into earlier stage uh, exploration. And a jurisdiction like Namibia that is reasonably unexplored and extremely well um, liked in terms of infrastructure and it's legal is definitely going to become a jurisdiction of interest to other capital. What that positions Antler Gold to do is some of its non-core projects. It allows us to tr attract partners who are looking for a first step into Namibia. And it allows us to build a um, sustainable relationship with, the, with external investors bringing money back into Namibia. So we, we're looking forward to doing that. And then obviously we are active in Zambia. Uh, our technical team was played a significant role in the in the discovery and the expansion of a rare earth project uh, in Namibia that is now listed as a, a separate entity, and we took those learnings and we're applying it to looking for opportunities like that in other jurisdictions. I think it's also valid to note that majority of the the deposits that we are looking for, be it gold or rare earths are all associated with erogeny or structure. And a lot of these times you, you come across these opportunities because you're looking in the same environments that you would be previous, you would be looking for gold and you notice that there's a mineral opportunity. Again, this offers the company a low entrance barrier and an opportunity to get some short-term value to its shareholders by partnering it off with a good, um, good partner. Uh, who then takes it through its most uh, riskiest stage, the pre-discovery stage, and then Antler has a ability to uh, get value from non-core projects. Here's a, a quick overview of our Nkoshi Gold project. Uh, as I said, it you know shares significant similarities to B2 Golds, Ochikoto, and Wolfshag deposits, and uh, in its most significant similarity is its mineralization, what its mineralization is associated with, and it's extremely magnetic. Uh, we've seen with the exploration and the success that B2 Gold had with the discovery of Wolfschach uh, Pit, um, that uh, geophysical surveys uh, and detailed geophysical work allowed them to further delineate and, and add, I think, north of 2 million ounces uh, to the life of mine there. So uh, the project was previously worked uh, by um, Rossing Uranium, which was Rio Tinto back in the day, but they clearly uh, didn't understand the, uh, the structural constraints of the, of the, on the mineralization. And they, they walked away from it for, for a multitude of factors, one of it being that the gold price was below $300 in and they had better opportunities. In, in 2004, the project was used as a listing project for then Bafex resources to roll into uh, Helio Capital on the TSXV. And the 43101 that was written there um, outlined uh, all the opportunity that was, was left. Since then, uh, no work has happened on the project. Uh, and we were lucky to pick up the project and we're now in the process of negotiating land access with the surface right owners um, to get land access and get our ECC and get working there. 
here are some of the historical intercepts and that clearly demonstrates the opportunity that is there. I want to click through to this to display how the work that has been covered uh, on, on the Onkoshi on Gold project. There was extensive uh, exploration done, but there's quite a massive amount of uh, exploration opportunity left. And I think the biggest one to focus on is geophysics has definitely changed since the early 90s to now not only in the how that you get the data but also the how you are processing the data to help display targets on top of that we know now from work that we've completed on our own projects as well as precedent that has been set by a lot of other projects that detection limits need to go down to five parts per billion in in our environment in order to better define anomalies uh, up until 1993 majority if not all of the sampling uh, AU detection limit was to 20 BPB uh, even in areas with a lot of concrete cover uh, so we think that a lot of these areas still have a significant exploration upside along with that we can see that the exploration drilling only went to a, a maximum of 140 meters down hole which works out to about 120 or 100 meters uh, vertical depth uh, and we know that these steep, steep, steep dipping uh, mineralized uh, environments normally are open ended to depth. So we we excited to test that. What you see here is the uh, what's known as a um, the regional magnetic survey, which is you know is testament again to Namibia as a jurisdiction because this is fantastic data that is available from the uh, MME here and you can clearly see there are two remnant mag anomalies that we've highlighted in these box here that coincide with a lot of the geochemical signatures that were previously uh, identified but show that the target is wide open along strike uh, Rossing uranium or Rio Tinto uh, historically only tested 500 meters of strike length. The combination of both two is 5.5 uh, kilometers. So we have about five kilometers of strike length. The other, the other thing to note is uh, since the 80s, there's been a lot of changing uh, of how um, projection from historically collected data uh, so the way people project um, onto maps and everything like that is different datums. There have been a couple of changes in, in data in, in collection of those projections, and that has shifted some of the historical work. You can see over here, this star is where it was previously believed to be the uh, what is known as the Rindi um, target which was quite far into what the Rindy farm with we have now ground truth as well as the um, uh, coordinate put on the ground coordinates and it has moved to within a, uh, a couple of meters of the fence which opens the opportunity up uh, because there's uh, ability to get land access there and that's what we're busy negotiating uh, with that together with that with the current project 7464, we've put in two applications that are contiguous to the south with this, uh, and this forms the new Onkoshi Gold project. What we're targeting here are old historical, um, uh, sorry, old, uh, well known, established, uh, orogenic uh, characteristics. On 8991, we have some granitic plutons that act as nice heat, heat sources, uh, allow for the mobilization of hydrothermal fluid that carries the gold. And then we have nice regional structures uh, with second order structures and structural potential structural traps running on it. So we continually expanding our footprint, uh, not, not hanging our hat on one opportunity but also targeting uh, many other many other opportunities. Those uh, both of those projects are currently in application with the MME. 
And once we get uh, uh, preparedness to grant, we'll be starting the ECC application. So I think, you know, just focusing again on our Rongo uh, Gold project, this project is a definite sign of the, the cyclical nature or the mineral discovery cycle. Uh, as, I, as I previously discussed, we started putting this project together in 2016. Uh, since there, our neighbors made the discovery of the Twin Hills uh, deposit, which validated our thinking. And the gold has done significant work over this area. And we have now, uh, we've um, not now, we continue to contract uh, our Namibian partners, Excel Dynamic, who are busy completing a ground uh, geochemical survey for us. And those results uh, will start coming in over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so since, since 2007, as you can see, we've done uh, significant work uh, over all our EPLs that we have within that area, and we continue to build uh, targets up from that, as well as uh, bring targets on concept to drill ready. Um, there was extensive drilling done on what was deemed our C1 target. We did that drilling to test that the mineralization was in, in, uh, in the system, that the system did have mineralization. But from 2017, we've definitely felt our C2 target, which was our, our earliest stage target. It was a concept at that time, was our most perspective target. And we've been working to get that uh, all the way up um, to where it is today. So over here, it's a, you can see we had identified seven uh, potential targets. And we name those targets C1 through to C7. And what those targets represent is either there's lithological contacts between the Kusev and the Karabib formation, or there were structural complexities or areas of structural um, uh, interest that could potentially act as a physical trap, or there are areas of heat source that would uh, create uh, enough heat to get the hydrothermal fluid to start moving. And since then, we've been working it down and have now put our high priority targets in there where we know that there is significant upside left over. And those are known as our C2 South uh, and our C2 extension targets. Our C2 extension targets are, let me get my pointer again. Fall over here, uh, which is the northern limb of the Kransberg syncline. And those share significant similarities to Ocino Resources uh, Twin Hills deposit. Ocino Resources Twin Hills deposit and targets fall along here, the Karabib Fault. Uh, then there's a syncline that runs to the, the north, and we're on the northern limb over here. We have just begun a tight uh, calcrete and soil sampling campaign with uh, Excel Dynamic, uh, and that field work is ongoing. And we've also had Cranbourne University down here who've just completed a, a three-day uh, uh, field experience um, sampling and mapping program with us on that project, and those results are going to start coming out. Our other high-value target is C2 South, which is contiguous and runs uh, uh, to the north of the, the Karabib Fault. Uh, here, the company has been able to delineate a seven kilometer uh, gold anomaly. Uh, we're busy conducting some infill sampling there, and we are planning a subsurface uh, drilling campaign that we're hoping to start in the second half of this year. Just zoomed in, uh, it's always hard to show these maps uh, in a broader scale, but here, you can see the, the gold anomalies that we've identified uh, on our C2 South here in the bottom and our C2 extension here in the top. And the rationales are, are very simple. We have a gold in soil or calcrete anomaly that is coincidental with areas of structural complexity as well as areas of um, lithological contacts. So we already know that the system, uh, the long-lived uh, deep-seated structures, 
are mineralized uh, because of the drilling we've completed, as well as uh, uh, some of the fluid, uh, some of the discoveries uh, adjacent. But we also now have physical and chemical traps that allow for the dropping out of mineralization. Those, those areas also high, are highlighted by a geochemical anomaly that is coincidental not with linear structures, but some areas that are cross-cutting and have jogs or bends that allow for it. So the company is in the process of conducting some sampling on the extension here, which is off the map, as well as some strategic infill sampling here and extension sampling with the XL dynamic in order to better define those targets and better define the drill, uh, drill program that we're hoping to execute in the second half of this year on this project. I think this is a clear demonstration on how the exploration cycle works. Uh, and I'm extremely proud uh, of you know, where the company has come from, from a concept uh, all the way through to a pre-discovery drill ready target. And it displays the prowess of our, our two, uh, our, not only two, our Namibian technical team that uh, apart from me in the Namibian office, uh, the office that we have here is fully Namibian. And it just shows that the availability of skills as well as um, the opportunity that presents itself here in, in Namibia. Again, the, the Pariasis Gold project, this is a greenfield project um, with no historical work done on the Kuseb formation, which is an extremely important formation in the uh, Damra uh, gold, gold belt, orogenic belt. But it gives us a strategic land position in a country that is starting to get known as a new gold destination in a market where other um, capital is starting to look to uh, spend money in, in, um, into the exploration opportunities of Namibia. Not much work done on it, but uh, what, what we've tried to highlight here is the similarities. And you can see that in the rocks, the color of the rocks, as well as the structural complexities of the project that we're putting together there. The company is busy. We've just received our ECC um, on our projects and we're planning a quite a robust greenfields exploration program on that uh, project now. Our case area earth project, as I said, you know, was an opportunity that came along because we, we knew what we were looking for here. Uh, and there's not many early stage uh, rare earth carbonatites uh, exploration projects going on uh, globally at the moment that share some of these strong, uh, strong characteristics. And the thing we work for, look for is very simple. We look for simple mineralogy and uh, low radiation and then um, endowment potential. Um, we've conducted uh, 55 grab samples uh, over the area. Those results actually are in our MDNAs and we do have uh, significant TREO mineralization throughout. Uh, and what is actually interesting is majority, uh, the basket spread, rare earths, um, TREOs, total rare earth oxides, the basket spread is heavily weighted towards um, NDPR. So uh, yeah, why antler? I think it's, as I said, we've got two high potential, uh, high quality gold projects that have uh, discovery potential. And it allows us uh, two analogies of two premier gold projects in this country. You know, Koshi is like uh, Ochikoto and our central gold project is like Twin Hills. And then we have a strategic portfolio that allows us to look at short-term uh, opportunities. As I started this off, our experience is not only in the capital markets, we're not, we're not a, a bunch of foreigners that have come down to Africa, we're Africans exploring in Africa. Um, and we know, we understand not only the geological environment, uh, but also how to work down here in a sustainable manner for our, all our um, stakeholders. Obviously at our low rating at the moment, um, with the work that we're busy ongoing and results that we look to have in the future, there's strong news flow. 
uh, and that would grow that would grow a massive potential. And then we've got a clear a clear path. You know, we're looking for good, technically sound projects. We're not just uh, pegging moose pasture uh, projects that have a opportunity to a make uh, allow us make a discovery and have continued growth through project generation uh, as well as partners. From a corporate perspective, uh, we're extremely tightly held with uh, just shy of 36% held by insiders as of our, our last public uh, financials. And we have about a cash position of just shy of a million, a million dollars. So uh, because of our ability to conduct good exploration uh, for very uh, you know, cost-effective ways, because we hear a country not jetting around everywhere, that gives us quite a long runway um, to get things moving again. Thank you very much for joining. And I, um, I hope that uh, you know, put everything into perspective. Uh, if there's any questions, please feel free to pop them in the um, uh, uh, Q&A box, which I think you'll find in the, somewhere on your page, and I'll, I'll happily answer those questions now. Okay, well, no questions, but please feel free to email us at um, uh, info. At, in, thank you very much, Sam, and, and, and thanks for joining. Um, Please feel free to email us at info at antlergold.com and follow us on our social media channels. Uh, as I say, as we, the company is getting into an area where a lot of our exploration is coming to fruition, and we expect a lot of that exploration news to start becoming public news soon. Thank you very much uh, for your time, and I look forward to engaging with you guys more.